Okay, there's a couple more things that we need to do on this side to finish it. You might think we're all done, but one thing that we typically have to deal with is we would like a nice edge to finish off with. Typically, when we start, um, before we start machining, we, you know, cut the piece of stock a little bit longer. I typically cut it a quarter inch longer than the actual um, piece that we're making. Then before we do any machining, I manual, or any CNC machining, we manually smooth off one face with a, with a big end mill. And that cleans up one um, edge. And so I would clean up this edge here and make it nice and square. And then I'd put an end stop against the edge of that piece. The reason why I'd put an end stop there is when we have to flip it 90 degrees to cut the other side and then 90 degrees again, we can push the actual piece up against that end stop and we always have the same location. But that still leaves this at the other end. Okay, and remember when I made the stock a little bit longer and you can see it hanging over the edge. It'd be nice to cut that off. It'd be nice to cut it off not manually, because we'd have to measure that out. It'd be nice to cut it off um, using the measurements on the, the CNC machine and actually just goes out to the right position and cuts it off. And so what I'd like to do is do that cutoff. And what we could do is add an, another operation, add a contour. Or what we could do is we could, in fact use one of our other contour operations and just do that. And so um, what I would like to do is just add in another operation, and it won't take long. So I'm just going to go Tool Paths, Contour, and I'm just going to select this edge here. And notice I'm going this way, and so that would be, if I'm cutting on the right side, that would be a climb cut. And so what I'm going to do is just hit Check, and we'll go through this very quickly. Notice the tool is already selected, tool number four. The cut parameters. We need to cut on the right if we're doing a client cut. I would like a lead in and lead out, um, just because I don't want to just plunge right in the corner of the piece there. Um, again, the breakthrough, I'm cutting 50,000 and steeper. I don't want to do multiple passes. I don't want to do a finished pass here. You could if you wanted to. Again, we're not dealing with tabs. We'll talk about those in a later, um, a different piece. Linking parameters. Notice that doesn't keep the information on those. So I need to go again, negative 0.125. And then um, home reference points. I want to retract. Realize in the last lesson we retracted before. And so what I need to do is in the previous operation where I cut the bearing holes, I'm going to go to parameters, and I'm not going to retract. And so let's think about what it's going to do. When we first do the slots and the access holes, we're going to approach. If you look at the linking of parameters, we pro approach. And then we keep the same tool for the bearing holes. We don't approach or retract. And then finally, when we do the last piece, which is the actual cutting off the end, we retract. And so now I can click all of these and hit play. And it looks like we're good. They're cutting off the Bearing holes and then cut off the end. So now this piece is done. I should save it. And so what I'm going to do is go file. Um, I've already saved it before, but we'll just go save as and I'll select it over again. Um, notice I call it, it was the part was called chassis side. The way I typically name it is I write which operation. This is going to take four different operations for four different sides. So I'll call this operation one. And we need to be able to distinguish those because often the person machining it is not the same person who's doing the master cam. And so it's important we distinguish those. 